Hello, welcome to this tutorial on how to create a CAPE project. My name is Carlos Beltran, your instructor. Let's start by opening the CAPE software. I already have it open here. On the right side of the screen I'm showing an Excel spreadsheet of the project we're going to model in CAPE. When CAPE is initiated, it starts in the Executive EX module, where there is nothing created, everything is empty, we don't have any files created yet. So let's create the model of our power system. Choose File from the main menu, and select Create New Database and Drawing. Then we look for the file empty starter which is located in the CAPE 15 folder on Drive C. There we find the empty starter file. We select it, and click Open. This is the template for creating any new project. Now we're going to name the project. Let's go to where we want to save our project. I am saving it in this location. I'm going to name the file Garayos, with the current date to differentiate from the other Garayos projects that I have already created. Next, click the OK button. We are already starting to create. Now we go to the one line module. The upper part is where CAPE shows text information. The larger bottom part is the graphics area. So let's click on the graphics area. First we have to place a new bus bar in order to create a power system. Click on the red vertical bus bar icon and drag it into the graphics area. This pop-up window will appear and CAPE will automatically number all buses as they are introduced. Click OK. Another pop-up window will appear. This first bus bar is in 230 kilovolts because the network equivalent is at this voltage level. You can ignore the substation field for now. All red highlighted fields must be filled. By default CAPE creates this bus as a real bus. Since all red fields have data, we now click the green check mark. Next we're going to connect the network equivalent source which is modeled as a generator. Drag the icon menu in order to make the generator icon appear so we can select it. Notice that the cursor changes into a cross. Follow the instructions that appear with the cursor. A generator data entry window will appear. Since this generator is a network equivalent, we will select the first radio button to introduce the generator's impedance data in per unit, and at base power of 100 MVA. The network equivalent has already been determined for this project, as shown in the Excel spreadsheet. Leave the power factor set at 1 as shown by default. Now introduce the generator's impedance as shown on row 9 of the Excel sheet. Now we are going to cut and paste from Excel into CAPE the generator's positive sequence, negative sequence and zero sequence per unit impedances. The first column is for sequence resistance values. And the second column is for sequence reactance values.
All red fields are now completed with data. Therefore, the network equivalent generator has been completely defined. Click on the green check button, and now the generator icon appears connected to the bus. A useful tip is to select save and reread while in the old module. This will save the graphics file of the project. I will name the graphics file Garayos, exactly the same as the GDB file except that I will cut the GDB extension from the file name. Cape will put the GF extension to this file by default. To verify that the GDB and GF files have been saved, we must do a save and reread once again in the exit Cape. Proceed to open Cape once again, since we already have the GDB and GF files created. Go to the main menu. Select File, Attach Database, Edit Most Recently Used List and select the corresponding Garayos GDB file. The Cape Session Setup window appears. Make sure to check the Read Graphics File box and look for the corresponding GF file. Select it and click Open. Finally click on the OK Build Short Circuit Network button. We have successfully opened our project, so now let's simulate a short circuit in the SC module. Place the cursor over the bus and notice that it changes from a hand to a donut shape. Now right-click and choose Faults and then 3-Phase to Ground. Let's enlarge the graphics with the magnifying icon. We can now see the magnitude and angle of the short circuit. Since this is a 3-Phase fault, we can see the fault current in each phase by selecting the corresponding letter. Notice that for a 3-Phase fault, the magnitudes are the same, but the phasers are separated by 120 degrees. Which confirms that three-phase faults are symmetric. And that the negative and zero sequences do not exist. Since everything has been verified, let's clear the faults by right-clicking on an empty area and selecting Clear All Faults. Now go back to the old menu and select Save and Reread. We can now exit safely. This tutorial has ended.